Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you that we can be together today. I just thank you so much, Lord, for your word. It's alive and it's full of power. And uh, Lord, we need life and we need your power. We need life that's really life, life that comes from you, life that's really life. <clears throat> so Father, I just ask you, please anoint me one more time. Please let the mantle of teacher rest on me and enable me to be accurate and clear with what it is that you've put on my heart for today. Lord, we just love you and we thank you that we can press into your word and that your word can come to us and just go deep within us to bring forth a mighty, mighty, powerful harvest. And Lord, I just thank you today for the reality of your word that tells you, tells us that the Father keeps us remaining. The Father is working. He keeps us. If he keeps us, nothing can snatch us out of his hand. <laughs> nothing can snatch us out of your hand. And we just give you glory and honor and praise for that in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. So we are at the bottom of 9.3 today. Um, we are in lesson nine, which is remaining in Christ, which is an absolute. And we've had several powerful, wonderful lessons already. Just amazing. Um, on 9.1, we're remember, reminded that the memory verse comes from John 15, 5, where Jesus is speaking. And, and he says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Amen? So we are in the, the part of um, uh, the, the lessons right now where we're talking about defining and refining the life of Christ and um, just letting his life be a continual flow. Um, we want our lives to be demonstration of his life, amen, and fulfillment of his purposes. As we went on to 9.2 and 9.3, uh, we were reminded that in the uh, New International Version and all of the newer translations that the word abide is not used, but what is used is remaining in, in Christ. Um, that Jesus says, I'm the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you. We talked about the power of the reality that the anointing remains in us because Jesus Christ is in us. Amen. We talked about the power of remaining, that remaining in Christ is remaining in his love. And the word reminds us of that over and over again. In John 15, 10, um, the word says to us, Jesus says, if you obey my commands, in other words, if we are Christ followers, obeying his word, obeying as he leads us, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. And the challenge in these days of living his love, living his love, how do we do that? How do we respond in the opposite spirit? How, how are we just loving each other? It, uh, I loved the, um, the memory verse, you know, at the bottom of, uh, not the memory verse, but the emphasized birth at the bottom of the announcements today. Um, just, just precious, you know. Um, this is difficult in these times. It's difficult. Um, people are hurting. Uh, Carol was saying this morning, people are fearful. There are a lot of tremendously strong opinions, okay? And um, how, do, how do we just live the life of Jesus Christ? Amen. God, help us to do this. How do we do this? So then we went on to 9.3. Well, at the top of 9.3, we, we did an, uh, a, an entire lesson that was entitled Deep Roots from Colossians 2, 6, and 7. How are we to continue in the vine, Jesus? And there are clear instructions there, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith, and overflowing in thanksgiving. Amen? Good stuff, good directions, good instructions. Then we came last time 
to uh, the middle of 9.3, um, the father keeps us remaining in the vine. And the title of last week's lesson was A Kept Woman, A Kept Woman, uh, understanding that the world's view of that is um, very negative. You know, it's a woman who is receiving uh, financial support, perhaps a place to live, maybe food, maybe even fine things being given. Um, however, whenever she is in need, personal need, heart need of the one who is providing those things, she can never have an assurance that that person is going to be there. However, when we are kept in Jesus Christ, <laughs> all those needs are met and we have total confidence that he will always be there for us, always. He will never leave us or forsake us and when, when we have a heart need, he is with us, amen? A kept woman. And I did read that, um, that um, piece that was written anonymous, anonymously about being a kept woman last time and many of you asked for it and I gave you those copies today. So now we continue on at the bottom of 9.3. And uh, Colossians 3.3 3 says, now we're talking about the Father keeps us remaining in the vine. Amen? The Father keeps us. Colossians 3.3 3 says, and I'm actually going to read Colossians 3, 1 through 3, says, Paul is writing to the church at Colossae, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God and set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Amen? Amen. The title of today's lesson is Hidden with Christ in God. Hidden with Christ in God. Um, it's, it's an absolutely amazing statement. Set your hearts on things above and set your minds on things above. I've told you that I'm going to be starting this series June 14th and Help for Hurting Women entitled Your Mind Matters. And of course, it's a, it's a play on words because if you look up the word matters in the dictionary, it literally does mean two things. It means when something has significance, when, when, it, when something matters to someone, that's how we use it. It has significance. Um, but the other thing is, it has to do with individual circumstances. Okay, the matters of the heart or the matters pertaining to this particular situation. And um, our, our minds, are continually challenged by the things that are going on around us. Um, it, through, coming through COVID, I have watched people's minds challenged in ways that I, I really have not experienced before. Um, divergence of opinions, divergence of hearts, concerns, fears, confusions, disappointments, just all kinds of things. And it always, in the end, does come down to this. Set your minds on things above. Amen? Not on earthly things. For you died. <laughs> You're dead. And your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Isn't that amazing? You died, but you're alive. Hallelujah. <laughs> and now it's life. That's really life. Amen? Amen. So um, Psalm 91, I'll just read it to you. Psalm 91, just to, just to be reminded, Psalm 91, 1 and 2 from the Amplified says, He who dwells, 
This is abiding. This is remaining. This is not a place of visiting. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust with great confidence and on whom I rely. Amen? Amen. Dwelling, remaining secure, resting in the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, being kept, choosing to be kept. We choose, right? We choose to be kept or to not be kept. So this is not a place to visit, but this is a place where we are not cowering, we are not fearful, we are stable, we are fixed, and we are confident. Amen? We are stable and we are fixed. He's my refuge and he's my fortress. He's my God in whom I trust. This is pretty personal, right? With great confidence on whom I rely. I love how Psalm 91 makes this transition because it begins, he who dwells or she who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty whose power no enemy can withstand, but then it immediately becomes powerfully personal. I will say, amen, I will say, from my mouth I will say. Amen? Um, I share a particular scripture with you <laughs> repeatedly over and over and over again, but I'm going to share it again. And this comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 22. We're talking about being secure. It is the Father who keeps us remaining in Jesus Christ. Our lives are hidden with Christ in God, right? This is a firm place, a secure place. So first I'm going to read it from the NIV, 2 Corinthians 1, 18 through 22. But as surely as God is faithful, is God faithful? Yes. As surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Paul says, and Silas, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. And here's the stunning scripture I've told you over and over again. When God called me back to him and called me back to the word and told me to just start reading it all over again. This was one of the scriptures that completely blew my mind. For no matter how many promises God has, mine, has made, they are yes in Christ. That's stunning. That is stunning. No, no matter how many promises God has made, they're yes. They're yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Verse 21, here it is. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. Amen. Got it? It is God who keeps us remaining in Christ. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us. He set a seal of ownership on us, and he put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Can you say amen? amen? Guaranteeing what is to come. This reads from the Amplified this way, 2 Corinthians 1, 18 through 22. But as surely as God is faithful and means what he says, our message to you is not yes and no at the same time with the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Sylvanus, Timothy, 
was not yes and no, but has proved to be yes in him, true and faithful, the divine yes affirming God's promises. Isn't that good? The divine yes affirming God's promises. For as many as are the promises of God in Christ, they're all answered yes. The yes, when Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, they all became yes. Amen? So through him we say our amen to the glory of God. Now it is God who establishes and confirms us in joint fellowship with you in Christ. I love this. The power of being established and confirmed, Paul says, part of that confirmation is that we are doing this together as koinonia, as the body of Christ. Amen? The ecclesia, this, this, is, this is powerful. Now it is God who established and confirms us in joint fellowship with you in Christ and who has anointed us, empowering us with the gifts of the Spirit. It is he who has also put his seal on us, that is, he appropriated us and, I love this, certified us. Isn't that something? Certified. Have you ever gotten a certified letter in the mail? It's like, ah! Okay. <laughs> certified us as his and has given us the Holy Spirit in our hearts as a pledge, like a security deposit to guarantee the fulfillment of his promise of eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen? I mean, God makes us stand firm. He wants us to know what is ours through Christ Jesus, what has been secured for us, secure in the security of what has been secured for us. Can I put it that way? Uh, triple, triple emphasis. It is God who makes us stand firm, knowing what is ours, knowing who Christ is in us and who we are in him. Um, I remind myself of Pastor Russ, if you will notice when he's preaching now, he will often say, I put this down. I put this down. He doesn't say, you put this down. He'll say, I put this down. In other words, in his notes, he's saying, I put this down. Okay, so I put this down. What does verse 20 really mean? It means exactly what it says. No matter promises, how many promises God has made. And theologians and studiers tell us that there are over 7,000 promises in the Word of God. What we need is not left out. Amen? Amen. Yes, at Calvary. But those promises have to become personal to us. They have to, it's not just a general, okay, I accept all your promises. No, God watches over his word to perform it. And when we find the promise that pertains to our need, the longings of our heart, the ways that we need to pray, then we are able to pray with the assurance, as, as Jeremiah tells us, that God watches over his word to perform it, okay? And over and over again in the word, we are told the power of our words that we are to say. We read it just again in Psalm 91. I will say of the Lord, amen. I will say the promises. I will speak the promises. I will declare them, profess them and confess them and coming into agreement. What does amen mean? I agree. I agree. I agree. I am coming in to agreement. Can you say amen? <laughs> amen. Turning to 9.4. 9.4. At the top of 9.4, the question is there to us, according to Psalm 16.8, if we set the Lord always before us, what will be the result? Here's a promise for you. This is how almost 
all of them work. There is a condition and then the promise, right? The promise is not just, okay, well, I'm a Christian, so I will never be shaken. No, that's not the fullness of what the Word says. What the Word says in Psalm 16, 8, it says, um, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. I keep my eyes fixed on Him. I keep my eyes always on the Lord, and with Him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Amen? So let me just propose to you here for one moment that if there are times in your lives, in these days or any days, when you are feeling shaken, what do you think the problem is? You've taken our eyes off of the Lord and put them on the circumstances. Are you with me? Every one of these promises you can turn upside down, okay? In other words, if I do not keep my eyes on the Lord and recognize that he is at my right hand, I will be shaken. Are you with me? Yeah. But his plan is, his purpose is, his promise is, the security is that if I will keep my eyes always on the Lord, with him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. So here's another one I want to give you. These are, you know, so many of these scriptures I give you are not in the Bible studies, and that's why you, you take notes, and that's good. Psalm 119, verse 165. Wow, Pastor Connie, this is a long psalm. Yeah, it sure is, right? Psalm 119, verse 165, and I will remind you, Psalm 119 is stunning in that every single verse refers to the Word of God. Every verse. Here it's called instruction, sometimes it's statute, sometimes it's called the Word, sometimes it's called commandments, but every verse of Psalm 119 refers to the Word of God. So Psalm 119, verse 165, from the New Living Translation, now listen to the condition and the promise. Psalm 119, verse 165. Those who love your instructions, there's the condition. Those who love your instructions, in other words, love your word, love your commandments, desire to obey them, those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. Isn't that awesome? No shaking, no stumbling, glory to God. Those who love your instructions <laughs> have great peace and do not stumble. It, it, these promises are amazing. Very similar promise in 2 Peter 1.10. 2 Peter 1.10. You can just, well, go ahead and turn there. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. And we're going to look first at verse 10, and then we're going to kind of <laughs> um, go backward a bit. This is interesting to me. I've been sharing this on Monday nights as we've been studying Psalm 107. One of the things that honestly and truly I find frustrating about the Bible, <laughs> and especially the Old Testament, but you find it in the New Testament as well, is that the, the highlight, the key, the thing that is the most important is not at the beginning of the thought. <laughs> It's at the end. Okay, so you read the whole thing and then it says, oh, by the way, this is really important, right? And if you do this, if you do all these things that were up there, okay, and I'm like, Lord, 
Couldn't you just say that first? Okay, this is really important. Now pay attention because if you do these things, here's the promise that you're going to have. So it's kind of what happens in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, this whole section from 2 Peter chapter 1. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, this is verse 10, make every effort. How much effort? Every. Make every effort to confirm your calling and election. You're calling to God. You're calling to your divine destiny. You're calling to be born again. You're calling to follow Christ. Make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Well, see, if you do these things, you'll never stumble. Oh, my word. What a promise. How amazing. What things? Well, it's all the things that were listed before we get to this verse. So back up now, and we will start at verse 3. Are you with me? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. So bear in mind now, if you have your, your Bibles, you can make some highlights, you can make some notes, because we've just been promised that if we will do these things, we will never stumble. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. All right, 2 Peter 1, verse 3. By his divine power, God has given us everything. Circle it, underline it, write it in neon. God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know him the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellent. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us, here it is again, great and precious promises. And these are the promises that enable you to share divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. End of story. Take me to heaven. Amen? I mean, awesome. Share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Verse 5. In view of all this, so here we go. Make every effort to respond to God's promises. And here are the instructions. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. And moral excellence with knowledge. And knowledge with self-control. And self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection. You know, it's interesting to me that in the order of this, that brotherly affection is coming toward the end. Because you really kind of have to have all of the rest of this effective and working before you really can walk in love no matter what, that you can love others. Love him first and then love others as you love yourself. Amen. Verse 7, and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think there's one of us sitting in here or a single one of you listening. It wouldn't still be listening. If you didn't want to be productive and useful in your knowledge of God, because you know this is not just for you. If you're still breathing, if you're still alive, God has a divine destiny for you, right? Right here, right now, in this moment, today. Amen? in this moment today. 
the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, but those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. Isn't that amazing? Just pulled back, pulled back. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Work hard. You know, Oswald Chambers, we, we studied it. Work out what God works in. Amen? Amen? Do these things and you will never fall away then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen, amen and amen. And I love it that uh, I didn't start with this, but 2 Peter 1 verse 2, as, so, as the Holy Spirit leads the writers of the New Testament over and over and over again, Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As we are coming to know him more, as we are growing in our knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, grace and peace is ours in abundance. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. So, and the next scripture that's listed there on 9.4, and the question that is asked is, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24, what do we learn about the one who has called us to be grafted into the vine? The Father is calling us, right? To be grafted in, and he keeps us. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. I, I mean, you all know, if you know me at all, you know I love this particular passage of scripture. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through, through and through, every part of us. What does that word sanctify there mean? It means wholeness be brought to wholeness, W-H-O-L-E, wholeness, soundness. We th often think of the word sanctify as only holiness as we would know it. This is wholeness, this is salvation, this is completeness, this is the sanctified, brought to wholeness and harmony and salvation and redemption through and through. May your whole, here's the definition then, may your whole spirit, soul, and body, every part of us, our spirit, our soul, our mind, our choice making, our will, our emotions, and our body, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is so awesome, and the promise Verse 24, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Can you say amen? amen? He is faithful and he will do it. Yes. Now, um, I want us to go to Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Ephesians 6 because we're talking about being secure, we're talking about being strong, we're talking about not stumbling, right? Not falling, and even not being shaken, right? So let's just um, think about what Paul was giving to us when he gave us Ephesians 6. And we read it, you know, it was written as one letter, but we divide it into chapters and verses. But 10 through 8, uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Okay, 
Now, as we come to know him better, as we focus on him, as we press on to know him, we have read the promises today that the Father keeps us. Our lives are hidden with Christ in God. Okay? That is true. But we have a part in this. We have a part in this to remain strong. To remain strong. How we go forward in this. Everything about the book of Ephesians is about relationship. The first chapters one through three are all about our relationship with God. Loving him with all we are, right? Coming to know him deeper, developing and maturing our relationship with God. Then at the end of chapter three is the amazing passage of scripture about the power of love, right? That knowing God better and better, deeper and deeper, love in the fourth dimension is all about the love of God. And that the love is absolutely imperative. God's love working in us and through us in order for us to have the power that is available to us. The dunamis Holy Ghost power. Are you with me? Yes. You with me? And then, after we've got that straight, <laughs> Loving God, receiving that love inside of us, the importance of living that love, then Ephesians 4 and 5 are about, you, those of you who can see me, loving this way. Okay, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all that you are, and love others, right? So Ephesians 4 and 5 are about expressing God's love to other people. Those who we know, those who are parents, those who are children, those who are um, over us in authority in the church, those who are over us in authority uh, in the workplace, in school. You with me? Get the order of this. We've got to get the love going in order to be able to do these interpersonal relationships God's way. You with me? Because it's challenging, and it's hard, and it's getting harder and more divisive. This is incredibly important that we are living the love. Amen? Yeah. This is what Ephesians is all about. And then we come to the end, and I say again, don't you think you should have told us this first? <laughs> Don't you think? Does this have to be the final word? <laughs> well, it is the final word. Ephesians 6, 10. A final word. This is from the New Living Translation. Translation. Colon. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And then there's the full armor. Okay. Now, just be reminded, I heard someone years ago, decades ago, and they were teaching why do we have to keep putting this on? Does it disappear overnight? <laughs> uh, no. Really what you're doing is you're checking. This is a litmus test. You're checking yourself. Where am I with this? Right? Are you with me? Okay, verse 11. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm. Here it is again right? Secure, standing firm, not stumbling, not falling. God's doing his part. We got to do our part. You with me? You with me? We got to do our part. Put on all God's armor so that you will be able to stand against all the strategies of the devil. And if you think that the enemy is not always about how can I come against you this time, right? What, can, what strategy can I use to get you to stumble this time? Are you with me? Okay. We have to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. What am I feeling? 
Why am I feeling this? How am I reacting? Always remembering, verse 12, we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Our fight is not, I don't care what it looks like, what it seems like, what is coming against you, who is coming against you. We're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities in the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world. Are these powers, are these dark evil powers still mighty? You better believe they are. Yes, they still are. And against evil spirits in the heavenly places, therefore put on. So here it is. Does it disappear overnight? No. This is checking. Is that do I still have this on? Put on every piece of God's or armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Okay? Then, after the battle, you'll still be standing firm. Amen? Amen? Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, 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 to protect our inside, speaking truth, considering truth, responding in truth, and the body armor of righteousness. We are righteous and in right standing because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news that you will be fully prepared. I'll often say to you when I'm praying about the full armor of God for myself, it says, you know, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel, which is peace. And I will say, Lord, I thank you that I can walk in peace today, no matter what. The whole world can fall apart around me, Anything can come against me, but I can walk in peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So that you'll be in addition to all of these. Hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery darts of the devil. Because trust me, they're still coming. Amen. The shield of faith. Keep your faith strong, secure, Put on salvation as your helmet. See, another, and I will use this when I am teaching on the mind, we have to understand that salvation comes to protect our minds as well because our thoughts can go wacko. They can just go wacko in these days. This is coming, this is coming, that report, this report, this report, this report, and this report is completely contrary to this report. I mean, it is coming out of us in this day of internet and social media. We have to put on the helmet of salvation, thinking the thoughts of Christ, setting our mind on things above, and take the sword of the Spirit our offensive weapon, which is the Word of God. And 18, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Does that mean we're praying in tongues every moment? No, but sometimes, yes, definitely. But all of our praying, if we're praying the Word of God, if we're praying the way we've been instructed, if we're praying according to the will of God, and the word is his will, that is praying in the spirit. Does that mean that you take yourself off to a monastery and all you do 24 seven is pray? No, but it does mean that there is a continual prayer wheel. It's just like a continual prayer wheel that's going all the time. Do we have set aside, set aside times to pray? I hope you do. It is important, it is important because in those times when you pray, and then we have to have, as one of my ministry team calls it, the shut up anointing. <laughs> we need to pray, and then we need to be quiet. And we need to listen to what it is that the Lord has to say to us. And I'm telling you, he will rarely, if ever, shout at you. It's quiet. 
It's quiet. It's quiet. Are you all with me? Yes. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. We're under attack. We are under attack. And then Psalm 91, which has been so powerful and precious to us through all this time, but again, just saying, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He's my refuge, my place of safety, He's my God, and I trust Him. Can you say amen? I trust Him. Your life. is hidden with Christ in God. This is God's plan. It is the Lord. It is your heavenly Father who keeps you remaining in Christ. It's the plan. It's the plan. This may sound overly simplistic, but honestly and truly, all we really need to do is go with the flow. We need to go with the flow of the Spirit. Truly, truly. I want to, um, oh, I'm out of time, so I don't want to. I was going to talk about something that I shared at retreat about undertow. There can be times when we feel like we've been blindsided and we have been grabbed and we are being pulled, okay? Just pulled away, pulled away. Keep your head above water. <laughs> Call for help to him, to him. Call for help to him and go with the flow of the Spirit and you'll be saved. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for this time, truly. What wonderful assurances we have from your word. What wonderful assurances. If we'll just do life the way you have called us to do life, be who you have called us to be, live and move and have our being in you, we will not be shaken, we will not stumble, we will be steady, steadfast, confident, and secure. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for it. Now take us from this place, Lord. Take us from this place loving you, yielded to you, and following you. And yeah, praying in the Spirit at all times. Let the prayer wheel just keep turning, and we're going to give you glory and honor and praise. Now, Lord, I thank you that we have been supernaturally sanitized in this place, and that we shall go from this place with your supernatural protection. And thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Amen. amen.